Hi everybody, this is Tony with BlessedTravelVacations.com and today I am in Fort Lauderdale and uh, we just got off the red-eye flight from Los Angeles and these red-eye flights are murder. They can really mess you up for a long time if you don't take these nine steps that I'm gonna share with you. These are my favorite nine steps that I use so that when I come uh, to a different time zone, I'm not messed up after red-eye flight. Check out this cool video. travelvacations.com and uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about taking a red eye flight now those red eye flights are dreaded they're horrible um, they can be really destructive to your body your mind you can get to your location just be flat out for you know two or three days uh, but sometimes they're necessary sometimes the, the flights are the best ones to get you to your cruise port or to get you to your destination at an optimal time. Uh, sometimes you can save a lot of money by doing red eyes because the flights are cheaper, cheaper typically. And then also you save a night of hotel. So it might sometimes be the only way to really be able to do your vacation. But again, they can be really difficult. So I've got 10 tips that work for me that, uh, that help me a lot in uh, trying to survive a red eye flight. So hopefully you'll like this video. But before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. We really do appreciate the support. We've got a lot of videos that uh, are gonna help you with some of the travel tips and show you around on some of the cruise ships that, uh, that we recommend. And we've got all kinds of videos that we think are important if you love traveling as much as we do. All right, so let's get started. So number one is take a nap before your flight. Now I understand that sometimes red eyes, it can be a little bit difficult. You may have to work that same day and then go straight to the airport. But if at all possible, if you can avoid working that day, try to avoid working that day and just rest before the flight as much as you possibly can. If you could take a nap during the day before you go catch your flight at night, typically a red eye is gonna start around 10, p.m., 10.30, 11 uh, p.m. at night, and you'll typically arrive very early the next day on a red-eye flight. So if you're gonna do that, get some rest. Um, try to go well-rested to the airport. Don't be rushed, don't be stressed out. If you can, uh, pack and plan for your vacation way in advance so you're not spending that last day packing and going to, and stressing out and trying to go all over the place to get your stuff together. But you know, tr you really use that last day or that day before your flight to rest. All right, number two, uh, spring for a better seat. If you can afford it, um, definitely try to get either like a comfort class or a first class if you can afford it. A lot of times in the money that you save with a red eye, um, you can get a better seat um, typically uh, if, if in, and that will just make it a lot more comfortable for you. If you're in a middle seat and you're flying five, six hours and you're sitting you're in the middle seat and it's a red eye, that's probably the worst place you can be. But uh, if you got an aisle seat or if you got a window seat, you can at least rest. If you got a window seat, you can rest against the window. If you got an aisle seat, at least you can kind of stretch your legs a little bit easier to get in and out and go and go to the bathroom or stretch your legs a little bit. So if you can spring for a better seat, if you can afford a comfort class where it's going to give you um, just more leg room, then that's always good. And of course, if you can afford a first class seat, that's the best because there's only going to be two seats there and uh, it really gives you a lot more room to, to rest and lean back and, and enjoy your, your flight. All right, the other thing, number three, is drink plenty of water. You want to drink water throughout your flight. Um, it's important to stay hydrated. You're going to get dehydrated anyways on a flight, typically. Uh, so, you know, I recommend that you stay away from coffee when the, when the beverage cart comes. Don't order coffee. Don't order any kind of sugary drinks. Don't order any, any alcohol. Just water. Stay hydrated, and uh, that will just help your body relax, and, and, and it's just good for you. So stay away from the sugary stuff. It'll keep you up if you're very... Uh, caffeine sensitive, it just gonna, it's just gonna prolong that night and you don't wanna do that. The other thing is uh, download a calming playlist to your device. 
Um, and this is really important. If you're going to you know, listen to some music, if you want to just relax, uh, don't put anything that's got a lot of energy, you know, heavy beats, anything like that. Try to just get something that's just going to be relaxing, some soothing. If it's an ebook or something like that, that's great. Um, don't be tempted to watch a movie on the flights. You know, uh, some a lot of the flights that we fly on, they have movies there and they've got a nice selection and you always are tempted to watch a movie. I'll just watch one and then I'll watch just two and then I'll watch three movies. And before you know it, you've already landed and you haven't rested at all and your mind is going as you're watching these movies, especially if they're high energy movies and so forth. So, um, you know, don't, don't read a book. I would just recommend that you uh, just download a nice playlist, listen to some music, relax, and just use that time as just downtime and just enjoy that. If you're traveling with your family or a companion, uh, just give them their time. Get, you know, Use that time for yourself just to rest and uh, just kind of relax your body. All right, number five. Um, I highly recommend that uh, you buy a quality set of headphones that are act that have active noise cancellation. Don't take um, the cheap headphones that came with your um, with your phone or anything like that. Um, buy some really good ones if you can afford it again. Um, but I really like, and I'm not getting paid for this, but uh, I really like my Sony head headsets. These uh, have active noise cancellation. They're they're fantastic. These are amongst the best noise cancellation on the market today. Uh, these Sony headsets are fantastic. Uh, literally through the app, you can control how much active noise cancellation you want. And so uh, I, I put these on and I've had, you know, screaming kids, screaming, screaming babies, the engine noise on the jet and um, just a lot going on. And you can't almost hear anything with these. And they're easy to travel with. They're fantastic. I recommend active noise canceling headsets. Believe it or not, drain, uh, just not having that all that background noise, the screaming child, the jet engine noise, the people laughing, um, not having all that really relaxes you so much. Um, stay away from the free headsets that they'll give you. They'll give you some headsets when you get there. These things are cheap. Um, you know, you put them in there, you hear all kinds of other noise, so you gotta crank up the music even louder. And uh, again, it's, it's all about relaxing and resting your mind. So uh, I definitely recommend a good set of active noise cancellation. Uh, um, headphones. All right. Number six, don't take any Dramamine or Bonine or any sleep aids for the flight. They're just going to make you groggy and tired. So if you're, you know, real susceptible to movement or you get uh, car sick or uh, motion sickness, um, and if you have to take them, then take them. But there's others, uh, other things that you could take that aren't drowsy. Uh, dra uh, typically Dramamine, Bonine, sleep aids, they're just going to make you really groggy and kind of, you know, just tired and and um, and and lethargic um, there are uh, patches that you can put behind your ear for motion sickness um, there's ginger that you could take there's different things that you could take that won't make you sleepy or drowsy uh, you don't want to take like a sleep aid and say well that just will help me rest but it's because the flights typically aren't long enough as long as your typical sleep and so you're going to be interrupted they're just going to really mess you up so stay away from those as much as possible I recommend. All right. And then um, number seven. Uh, so as soon as you land, I recommend, again, that you drink water uh, when you land. Um, ask them for a cup of water as you're walking out. Uh, take a water bottle. You could refill those at, uh, at the airport. Refill it there. Just keep drinking water. Drink water when you land. Drink water uh, throughout the day. Uh, you might be tempted to stop at the Starbucks at the airport and pick up a, a latte or a mocha. And just don't do it. Um, anything with caffeine or a monster or you know red bull anything like that all it's going to do is just make you crash later um and remember you're you're still tired you're rested because you've done these wonderful tips here but you're still tired your body's still tired because it's it it's taking it out of your regular sleep pattern. So stay away from the coffee. It's just not worth it. At least not that first day, maybe the second day. Even tea has some caffeine. Uh, I'd recommend just stick with water. All right, number eight. We're almost done here. Number eight. Uh, this is an important one. Arrange for transportation beforehand. So before you land, the day before, a couple days before, find out, you know, are you going to use a shuttle? Are you going to use, um, you know, a, a, a limo service or whatever you're going to use? Try to arrange that beforehand. To me, one of the worst things is getting off a red eye is, you know, you get off the, you land, 
the way it, to get off the, sh the, 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 the plane, walk to the, uh, to the baggage claim, get your bags, and then you have to walk outside, find out what, where you're at, walk to where the Uber station is, call your Uber, wait 30 minutes, because, you know, again, there's, there's hundreds of people that got off the flight at the same time. Most of them are gonna be using Ubers. You have waited 30, 40, 40 45, 50 minutes for an Uber um, at some of the busy airports, and that is just the worst. You're just already tired. You just wanna get to your um, hotel and you wanna relax. And so by arranging for transportation beforehand, um, you can really just rest and, and, and know that, you know, someone's there to pick you up at that time and you can get to your destination much faster and you just kind of prolong the things that are going to stress you out throughout the day. All right. Number nine. This is an important one. I would recommend that you check with your hotel before you uh, before you land. Uh, call them a couple days before. If you use a travel agent, your travel advisor, or if you use us, blesstravelvacations.com, we'll be happy to call for you. Uh, but call your hotel beforehand. And by the way, not only do we do cruises, we do hotels, resorts, um, all inclusives. Give us a call. We're happy to book something for you and help you plan that next vacation. Just make it as less stressful as possible. Uh, but anyways, going back to this. Uh, if you can, find out if your hotel will let you check in a little early. Um, a lot of times they will. If there's rooms available, they'll let you just check in and you can check in, drop your bags off. Uh, don't go to sleep. Don't lay down. Don't take a nap. Um, I recommend that, and I'll, that goes into my next one, but I recommend just drop your bags off if you need to take a quick shower to kind of refresh and then go out and explore the town. Go do something, find an activity, jump in the pool, whatever it is. But, uh, but if they don't let you check in early, if there's no rooms available or it's a little too early for check-in a lot of times check-ins are going to be at four you're going to uh, probably arrive around eight eight thirty in the morning nine o'clock in the morning it's a long time a lot of times they won't let you do that ask them to hold your bags typically they'll have a secure storage that they'll hold your bags you can go out and that way you're not carrying your bags make sure you have locks on them um, i have these little padlocks that i travel with all the time and i put those on my suitcases so i give it to them i know they're safe they're going to secure that and then i don't have to carry all my bags throughout town while i'm looking for breakfast or lunch or I want to go do an activity. Uh, pack whatever you're going to use for that day. Pack it in your backpack. So if you're going to need, uh, if you're going to get in the pool, you want your, your swim trunks, pack that in your backpack. If you're going to go out and um, explore the town and you want uh, a different pair of shoes, uh, pack that in your backpack so that you can just leave your bag there to take your backpack with you. All right, number 10. And um, I think this is really, really important. In fact, this is the thing that's helped me the most. It is uh, follow your regular routine at your new time zone. So you're gonna be tempted because you might be flying, if you're flying from the West Coast to the East Coast, well, that's a three hour difference. And you're gonna be tempted to um, you know, go to sleep at nine o'clock um, you know, uh, Pacific time, right? Uh, that's you know, midnight. Eastern. Uh, so I recommend that you try to adjust your body to the new schedule, whatever that new time zone is. So if you normally have lunch at 12 Pacific, have 12, have lunch at 12 Eastern. I know it's a little bit later. That almost feels like dinner, but you want to adjust to the new time zone as quickly as possible. So change your routine uh, to essentially keep your routine, but on the new time zone. That's really important. The sooner you do that, the more um, more quickly you'll be able to adapt to your new time zone. So definitely do that when you arrive at your airport, at your um, at your hotel, and you drop off your bags. You're gonna be tempted to go lay down. Don't do it. Don't don't sleep. Don't go to sleep early because it'll mess you up. Go to sleep at whatever time you normally go to sleep at, but on your new time zone. All right, so those are the 10 tips that I have for you that I think will help you really survive the next red-eye flight. Hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, we'd really appreciate a like. We'd also appreciate your subscribe. If you could share this with a friend or family that's gonna be doing a red-eye soon, we'd really appreciate that too. We hope you guys are having a, a wonderful time, and. Uh, we want you to keep traveling, enjoy your travels. If you have any questions or you want us to help you book any future travel, make sure you give us a call at blessedtravelvacations.com. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.